Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, August 27th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, we'll get to 99L in a second here, but just a quick update on the tropics in general for this weekend. Of course, we have Gaston out in the middle of the Atlantic. This will not be a threat to land, but we do have a couple of other areas of low pressure that have popped up. There's one here in the northwest Gulf of Mexico, and if we look at the water vapor imagery, this is pretty entangled with an upper level low as well off of Texas, and what this means is dry air and shear in proximity to the surface low uh, down here near the coast, and so this is not really a significant threat for tropical development. The NHC only gives it 10% chance over the next few days, but it is bringing tropical type rain to the coastal areas of Louisiana and Texas, and we all know Louisiana does not need more rain right now, so this is going to be a significant issue even without a threat for real tropical development here. This is going to be a problem in terms of bringing rain, and so we'll keep an eye on that as it meanders near the coast for the next couple of days. We do have another low as well off to the southwest of Bermuda, and this also is paired up with an upper level low. As we can see on water vapor imagery, the spin here, the surface low uh, off to the eastern side, again, this also means shear and some dry air in the vicinity of this system. And so this is expected to limit development, but there is a better chance of this one eventually becoming a tropical depression because it already has a closed circulation at the surface and it does have some thunderstorm activity, albeit rather disorganized. So this is not a depression yet, but the National Hurricane Center does give it a 30% chance of becoming one as it moves generally toward the west northwest. And this could actually get pretty close here to Cape Hatteras and the coastal areas of North Carolina over the next couple of days. So this may have to be watched for bringing some heavy weather that direction. But again, this upper level low that it's paired with is expected to limit significant development, but it may need to be watched anyway over the next couple of days. Moving on to 99L here, this continues to be the system affecting the most land areas down here and has stubbornly not developed, and uh, for good reasons that we've talked about uh, over the course of the week. If we take a closer look here, We'll see that the center of low-level spin is down here just to the southwest of Andros Island, and there's actually some west-northwesterlies paralleling the Cuban coast right now. It's hard to tell whether there's any southwesterlies, uh, and until we know that, we won't know whether this is actually a closed circulation. We might get a recon plane in there later today to check that. Uh, but even if it is a closed low, uh, it would not be a tropical depression yet because you can see all of this convection is pushed off to the southeast of the center. Given all of this northerly shear here, as you can see, these milky white cirrus clouds coming down along the coast of Florida. We continue to push all of that convection off to the southeast, and the mid-level structure of the wave remains severely decoupled. If the surface wave is here near Andros Island, then the mid-level wave axis is actually back here near the Turks and Caicos. It's very hard to see, but that's where it is. And this convection here is desperately trying to act like a glue that keeps these two close together, but uh, it really isn't going to work out here for this mid-level wave axis. It's too far away. These two are never going to match up again. The only hope now is for this convection uh, to eventually reform a brand new mid-level center uh, close enough to the low-level center that they can eventually become vertically stacked on top of each other, and that is probably the system's only hope of development. Uh, and that process always takes a lot of time. So whenever you see this kind of disjointed structure, it implies that it's going to be a little while before significant development can take place. And odds have decreased over the last few days for 99L in general over the next few days, given that, that models have backed off on seeing development. And uh, since we saw its structure north of Hispaniola a couple of days ago, that was kind of the warning sign that uh, this was going to struggle as it comes toward the west-northwest which is obviously a good thing for this area in here, but heavy weather, including heavy rains with the potential for flash flooding over the Bahamas and portions of Cuba, uh, will eventually start moving into South Florida over the next couple of days as this moves toward the Florida Keys and the Florida Straits on Sunday and Monday. And this will, uh, in general, bring heavy weather perhaps all the way up the majority of the Florida Peninsula with time. And we'll talk about how the steering flow impacts that moisture feed in a second here. Uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on this anyway. The NHC still gives it 40% odds of some kind of development once it gets out into the Gulf of Mexico. This is when wind shear may finally lighten in here. We've been saying for days that conditions may eventually get better for the system. They haven't so far, uh, but eventually uh, the, the wind shear may lighten in here. And once it finally gets into an area where that shear lets up, it may have a chance to vertically align. And we'll still have to keep an eye on it. Uh, right now, today, the low-level structure will be key. Whether it maintains convection during the day uh, may determine 
how organized it can be in the Florida Straits. Uh, with the west-northwest flow paralleling the Cuban coast like this, the island here kind of acts like a frictional barrier, which really helps to keep thunderstorms focused over the ocean, at least during the nighttime hours. During the day, you can get convection firing over the landmass of Cuba itself as the sunlight heats it up. Uh, but then again, the cirrus canopy from the overnight convection here may keep the eastern part of the island cooler today, which may help to keep convection focused south of Andros Island here over the water. And so this in general may aid the development of the surface low and over a great deal of time, it may eventually be able to reform a mid-level low over itself as well. Uh, but again, the shear will really need to let up before significant development can occur. If I look at the models really quick here, this is the GFS out to Sunday evening. This is the mid-level wave axis here uh, between Andros Island and Florida. There's this mid-level low up here off of South Carolina, and uh, this is key here because this is weakening the southern flank of this uh, mid-level ridge, which you can see over the mid-Atlantic states here. This is what has been bringing 99L west-northwest so far. But with this low off South Carolina being here, it weakens that southern flank, and so it allows the entrance of moisture up the Florida Peninsula and surrounding areas toward this mid-level low because this is inducing a weakness in the steering flow. And what this can do is if the wave is too weak in here, um, its mid-level guts, if you will, will end up slipping north toward this mid-level low. And so most of the moisture will actually end up in here, even though the actual wave may continue into the southeastern Gulf in here. And we can see this on the GFS because if this is at the 500 millibar level, if we go down closer to the surface, we can see where the wave is. This is 99L. Notice, of course, that it is decoupled still from the mid-level wave axis. This is the surface low over the keys, but its mid-level uh, structure is still off to its southeast. So you can see that they are mismatched here. They are not stacked on top of each other. That's the structure the GFS has continued to forecast consistently, and that's why the model doesn't show any significant development of this over the duration of its life. Uh, but we can see that as the system moves into the keys, obviously wet weather will be uh, being brought into southeast Florida, but watch what happens if we have this mid-level low to the north. If we go down to the surface, you'll see the flow change once we go from Sunday evening here out to Tuesday morning. Note how the low-level flow switches to out of the south and south-southwest here. This is bringing a large moisture fetch all the way up through this area, and this could cause uh, major rain for uh, much of the Florida Peninsula, despite the fact that the uh, disturbance is actually west of Florida. It will be primarily wet on the eastern side, most likely here, with very little going on on the west side of the, situ of the disturbance. And you can see also the remnants of uh, 91L here that we talked about uh, coming from out here southwest of Bermuda, moving toward the North Carolina coast. And you can see the surface trough here near the coast by Tuesday morning. So that's the feature we'll have to watch for bringing some heavy weather to North Carolina and some potential of tropical development with that as it nears the coast. So we will keep an eye on this as well. But as far as 99L goes, both the GFS and the European model no longer develop this in the Gulf, but you can see the surface, uh, the surface low remains intact here. And as long as we have the surface low over the Gulf waters, if shear ever lightens, this is still going to have to be watched. And again, the NHC still has a 40% chance for development with this. And although it has struggled uh, a lot so far, uh, it is still going to be around with us for the next few days. And as long as it's over the Gulf, uh, you can never ignore that. Uh, it does still have a chance to develop uh, if enough convection is able to fire around the center of circulation. So we'll keep a close eye on 99L and the other features around the Atlantic here. 91L, again, could bring some heavy weather toward the North Carolina coast in a couple of days, has some chance for tropical development during that time. It will likely be slow if it does occur. And then this other uh, surface low in the Northwest Gulf, not much of a threat for tropical development, but could bring some uh, unneeded rain to areas that have already had too much here along the North Gulf Coast. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on all of these features in the tropics. Again, stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the latest information. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.